Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the east of England into your homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please click the like button if you like what I say. You can click the down thumb if you don't like what I say. You can share with whoever you think would be interested or you can subscribe if you want to hear more of what I've got to talk about. Now today I wanted to talk about the stabbing in Luton. Luton isn't too far from where I live. It's a different area, but it's not that far. So anything that happens kind of within the vicinity is quite disturbing. Um, it's disturbing anyway, but it's even more so when it's on your own turf. And I heard about it through Nextdoor. I don't know how many of you have the Nextdoor app, but it's a neighbourhood app where people who live in the area share information and they talk about how long they've been in the area and stuff. So somebody raised it yesterday. And I put my little comment on it, you know, about whether or not it's the increase of violence on the TV and stuff like that. But this morning, I kind of wondered if safer minds meant safer streets. And why do I say that? Because the minds of our children, or of our young boys in particular, they're not safe. They're, they're very, I mean, especially when you think we've had a year of lockdown. We can't blame it on lockdown because stabbings have been going on for the last two or three years, more so. Back in my day, it was fisticuffs. The most you would get is a black eye or you might lose a tooth. Today, it is children respond in a totally different way. Why do they respond in that way? Why do they not feel safe to, talk, to speak their opinion? Why, they, why don't they feel safe enough to share views? Why don't they feel safe enough to defend their values and their principles and their family and their friends? Problem is now, you know, you interfere or you say something that somebody else doesn't like. And you do not know if you're going to be stabbed. You do not know the state of mind the person is that you are approaching. And it's like road rage. It's fine to stick your finger up at somebody or it's fine if somebody does something stupid and you go to challenge them. You don't know their state of mind. The same goes for our young people at school. You know, we do not know the state of mind of the, the person that they're challenging. If that young child who is carrying a knife is a victim of a home where there's domestic violence, he's more likely to use the violence to defend himself. As opposed to somebody who's coming from a stable home who is more likely to want to communicate and work it out verbally the problem. So we have a situation where young people do not know how to navigate life anymore. On tender hooks, parents on tender hooks, is my child going to be safe if I send him out to school? Is my child going to be safe if, I, if he goes on the street? How can parents live like that? In addition to everything else is going on, you have to be worried about your children. A lot of the parents, that is why they drop their children off at school, because they want to make sure that their children are safe. School is supposed to be a safe haven. And so when now you're worried about when you leave them off at school, when you drop them off at school, is anything going to happen to them while they're in school? What does that do to your mind? Is your mind safe? Is your mind peaceful? It cannot be. It must cause anxiety and stress. And the nation is already fragile, just recovering, just easing up out of lockdown. On top of that, they're talking about, oh, they might extend the lockdown or extend whatever it is. You know, we were supposed to be able to take off masks and be able to get back to normal. Now, because of all this influx of nearly 7,000 cases, Ooh, that might not happen anymore. So you're, it's affecting people's lives. What affects the parents who need to go out and make a livelihood for their children is affecting the children because it falls down. They say that you always chastise the one you love. So parents, if they're getting it from the top, 
they take it out on their children. They become irritable. They don't have time to talk to their children. They don't have time to pay attention to their children, especially those who whose livelihood has been taken away because they've lost their jobs or whatever. Or husbands have lost their jobs. And then they take it out on the wives. And then the wives take it out on the children. Nobody's paying attention. It's all about how I'm feeling. And the poor child who is meant to have someone to lean on, someone to talk to, somebody who's interested in them, somebody that can support their needs, that someone is distracted, is in pain, is anxious, is depressed, is drunk, is, are victims of abuse. Who protects the child? Then on top of that, the child goes out to school and he has to try and protect himself. He doesn't know what to say from what not to say. Sometimes these kids, they provoke you. If you don't try to defend yourself and you want to call it off and, you know, take it easy and say, look, you know, I don't really want to get into this. They start saying, oh, you're a coward. You're a mommy's boy. They start cussing off your mother. So even if you try to avoid problems, sometimes you're challenged. And then when you're challenged, that person who's challenging you is out to kill you. What do you do? It's a really sad state of affairs. But is the answer serious violence reduction orders? Is it more police on the streets? Is it more racial profiling? No. It's about the minds of individuals. You need to secure the minds of individuals. You need to put their minds of individuals at rest so they can have a sense of peace. You need to eliminate mental illness, which is causing all of this. And plus, you need to manage what you're showing on the TV and what young people access. Back in the day, in my day, we didn't used to see murders. We didn't used to see graphic scenes of violence. If somebody was murdered in a movie, you just see them on the floor. You don't know what happened. All you know is that they were dead. Now they go through the gory graphic details and that's pummeled and every single day it's going into our children's minds because they're watching that stuff because their parents are not trying to monitor what they watch. There's so many other ways to have access to this kind of information, even though there's supposed to be measures in place that say not for children. But children can still access it. Children are very savvy. So what do you do? Why is it necessary to show graphic violence? Why is it necessary? Can't you be creative in the way you tell a story? Wouldn't that be better? The message still gets across, but you don't have to be so graphic so that it normalizes death and murder in the minds of our children. Because that's what's happening. You're normalizing murder. You're normalizing death. And, you know, you see these people stab, stab, stab. And even in the cartoons, I mean, even something like um, uh, Home Alone. The amount of bricks and everything is supposed to be a comedy. probably think oh it's not a big deal we don't know what they what goes on into their blessed little minds we don't know they're young people and they're easily programmed and they're being programmed earlier and earlier to normalize violence oh what else i don't even know i think i've said it all to be honest um I wanted to say, are parents aware of their children's daily struggles, especially the males? Do they actually look at their children as they come through the door after school? Do they sit down with them? Or do they just let the boy come in, go upstairs with his satchel or his, his backpack or whatever, and just say, oh, are you going to do your homework? Your dinner be ready at six. Are they looking at their children? 
Are they measuring their temperament? Are they paying attention? Are they talking to them? Are they asking them about their day? Or are they so preoccupied about their own stresses and their own problems that they just think that their children can get by? Parents are meant to look after young children. Under 18, you're supposed to be paying attention to your children. They're not old. They look old and they might be feisty, but they're still children. And you have to learn to communicate with them. You have to learn to pay an interest and you have to learn to support. Evidence shows that parents who support their children and guide them and encourage them and validate them, they are high up on the scale. And yes, we have situations where there might be single families. But, you know, parents, even children, single families, their children can excel because their parents pay attention, show love and care and nurture their children. So there's no excuse apart from the fact that parents are not qualified to have children in a lot of cases. They don't have the capacity or the mental stability to raise children. They don't have the financial congruence to manage how to raise children. So, how do, how do youths resort to violence? Because they're defending their turf, they're defending their principles, they're defending their honour, they're defending their friends, their families. That's what they feel they have to do. And what a shame that you feel you have to go into your parents' kitchen, take a knife before you leave to go to school with the fear that you might have to use it. How sad that our poor children. It's really, really unfortunate. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.